So welcome everyone to, uh, to Castle Church. If this is your first, your first time, uh, thank you for the worship team for that, for that beautiful worship. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Alexis Valle. I'm an elder here at Castle, also on the worship team, uh, usually playing drums. Um, and I have the privilege and honor to bring the word this morning. Um, so I, uh, of course, when, when when Adam asked, I, I I said yes. I don't take this light lightly. I I think this is very uh, this is a very important part of the service. Um, and my prayer every time that I preach is that it is I'm like my words. It's not my emotions, but I, I pray that God gives me something for the church. Um, so if everyone can 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 turn to me, can can turn your Bibles to First Kings nineteen verses one through five. And then we're going to skip down to uh, verses 11 through 13. So the first passage goes. Now Ahab had told Je Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he, then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. And now we skip ahead to verses 11 and 13. The Lord said... Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then the voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Thank you, Father, for, for your word. And Lord God, I pray that, um, that this message, Lord God, may speak to the hearts of everybody here. Lord, I pray that you may loosen my tongue so that I may be able to say everything that I want to say here today, Father God. In your name we pray, amen. amen. So thinking about like the, the inspiration for, for this message, we went to a conference uh, a few months ago called the ARC Con Conference, some of the leadership here. And one of the speakers was talking about, um, he brought up like this, this, this little part of the story of Elijah and he related it to depression, which I thought was, 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 was interesting. So that kind of sparked something in my mind because I have a mental health back, background. So when it comes to like the, the, the Depression and thing, things like that. That's very interesting to me. So that, that's kind of where the, the idea started. So the message for today is titled, Settle Your Soul. Settle Your Soul. When I said it this morning, everybody thought I said, sell your soul? No, settle your soul, all right? Um, so let's, let's talk about Elijah a little bit. Uh, because when, when I was doing my, my research for, for this message, when, when I was dig digging into it, I was thinking about like who 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 is Elijah? Like I've heard of Elijah, I know some some of his story, but how like how was he first in, introduced in the Bible and what had he done up, up until this point? So Elijah is actually introduced two two chapters prior, and Elijah comes out hot. Like this is not somebody in the Bible who he goes through like uh, if you read the Bible, there's like usually like a lineage, like son of this man, son of this man. That that's not what it says about Elijah. It just says where he's from. And the first thing that Elijah does actually uh, as, as soon as he's introduced, is he, he tells King Ahab that there's going to be a drought and that it will, it will not rain until he, he, he says so, right? So that's, that, that's the first thing that, 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 that Elijah does. Uh, the second thing, during, during the drought, it says that he was fed by ravens. Um, so during, dur during the drought, God sent ravens to, to, to feed him. They brought him meat. He, he, was, he was living by a, by a brook. So God, God provided for him. And then at one point, God told him that he had told a, a widow in, Zer in Zarephath that she was going to feed him. So Elijah goes to, Zer to Zarephath. He, he finds a widow, and he tells her to give him a little bit of bread and water, 
what, what the widow says is, all, all I have is this little bit of bread and flour, uh, this l- little bit of oil and flour, and I'm going to bake it for my son so that we might go die. Um, but what, what Elijah says is, um, can you make me bread first, and then the, the, the Lord will provide. So that widow was, she believed in, in God. I don't know if I would have trusted a, a stranger and fed him first, but she did, and God p- provided for her. She had unlimited oil and water and everything throughout the, the, the entire time that, that, that Elijah was there. And then something happened uh, over, the past, over the next few months. Her son got sick, and he actually died. So the widow went, went, went up to Elijah, and she said, like, my, 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 my son has died. Can, can you believe this? And what, what Elijah did is he took the son. He brought him upstairs. He laid him out on, on, on the bed, and he prayed o- over him. And he, and he put his body over him, and the son actually came back from the dead. Now, I was in, interested because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there's some stories of, of people coming back from the dead in the Bible, um, in, in the New Testament. So I, I did some, some research. There's only nine places in the Bible where it says that somebody came back from the dead. And this is actually the first time. So just imagine you, you, you being Elijah, you praying to God and him resurrecting somebody from from the dead, like, and it, he, he was pretty casual about it, too. He just said, here, your, your, your son is fine, right? But that's like a powerful thing that God did, Some, something that had never been seen or had, had, had never been recorded in the Bible, right? So, so keep in mind, clearly God is using him in a very great way. This is a man of faith. This is a man who is allowing himself to, to be used by God. So the, the, the next thing that happens and what kind of leads to the first passage that we read this morning was that there was a, 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 a confrontation between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. The, 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 the kingdom of Israel at this time, they had turned away from, from God. They were, they, were, they were worshiping the idols and every, every, everything like that, and one of them was, was called Baal. So God, God told Elijah to pre- 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 present himself before Ahab because it was finally going to rain. So Elijah met with um, this guy named Obadiah. Ob- 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 Obadiah was a man of faith. Uh, he's, he's a man who was faithful to, to the Lord throughout all, all this time. Um, he had actually saved a hundred of the Lord's prophets because the king's wife was actually trying to kill all of the Lord's prophets. This is, this is going to be important, so, so, so keep that in mind. So Elijah goes to Mount, Mount, Mount Carmel, and he has, he has a confrontation with 450 of the, 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 the prophets of Baal. And it's basically like, a, like, like a, a, a competition. He says, all right, there's two, two bulls here, right? So we're going to build some, so some altars. You're going to call to your God. I'm going to call to my God. And whichever God ex- accepts the sacrifice, that is the real God. So the, he lets the prophets of Baal choose their, their, their own bull. They cut him up. They, they, they put him on the altar. And they're screaming and they're yelling for, for Baal. The Bible says from the morning till noon and nothing, right? So that's kind of embarrassing. Just think, think about it, right? Like, can, can, can you imagine? Have you ever, like, tried to do, like a, like, a magic trick? I know I have in front of somebody and the magic trick doesn't work. And that's, that's, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's like, no, I, I swear, I swear, I know, I know how to do this trick. So that, that's, that's, can you imagine, like, that going on for hours? Because that, that's, that's what it was for, for the prophets of Baal. And then Elijah started making fun of them. He was saying, oh, maybe your, your God is away. Maybe he's, he's not listening. So they, they started to, to, to go to the extremes where they started to, like, slash themselves and do, like, what was, cus- what was customary back then. And still nothing. It says that he waited. They were basically from the morning until the time of the evening sacrifice. They were crying out to Baal. So once Elijah had had enough, Elijah said, all right. It's my turn. He built an altar with 12 stones to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. He, he put the bull on top of wood, and he had men fill four jars with water. He built a moat around it, and he had them put all the water over everything three times. So, as you can imagine, this thing was drenched. It was soaked with water. And then Elijah finally prays in 1 Kings 18, 36-38. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are the God of Israel and that I am your servant, and you have done all these things at your command. 
answer, answer me, Lord, answer me. So these people would know you, Lord, our God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil. It also licked up the water in the trench. So you had these prophets who had been praying all, all day for something to happen. Nothing happened. And, and Elijah prayed once, and this fire came, came down, and it burned up everything. Now, that was interesting to me. I'm, I'm a firefighter, so usually stone doesn't burn. So the, the way that, that the Bible mentioned it, it says that it burned up the sacrifice of wood and the stone. So I, I did some research. In order for stone to burn, the temperature has to be like 2,700 degrees. That's hot. Not, not even like the hottest house power gets, gets that hot. So that just goes to show you, right? Like it was a powerful thing that God did to, to be able to, to burn up everything. And then there's one more uh, miracle that happens before uh, God brings the, the rain that I, th I, I think is kind of funny to, to like think about is that um, it says that God gave Elijah strength. So he tucked his cloak under his belt and he was running faster than a guy on a chariot. I just think that that's kind of funny to think about. Like, can you imagine, like, you're in the desert and you see a guy, like, just, like, passing by? That's, 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 that's just kind of funny. Um, so the point of, of, of all of this, the point of me re retelling everything that, that Elijah did, right, is that you would think, right, you would think that a man like, like Elijah, who has seen God work, who has let himself be used by God, who resurrected some, somebody through the power of God, something that had not been seen before, you would think that no matter what came this man's way, this man would be fearless, this man would, would be confident. But that's not what happened. And the truth is some, that there's sometimes it doesn't take a lot to knock us down. We could be going strong. We, we, we could be having like a good few months and we're confident in God and you know, everything's going great. And it could take some, something really small some, sometimes that changes everything. The thing about what, what happened with, with Elijah is that this wasn't even new, right? Because there, there was a drought for three years. The king had been looking for him for, for three years. So it's, it's, it's not like Elijah didn't know that they wanted to kill him, but there was something about this, right? There, 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 there's sometimes where something could, could just hit us, and it, it affects us in a way that it, it hasn't before. And it could be something small. It could be a comment, right? Social media is great in a lot of ways, but it's so bad in, in other ways. It's so easy to attack people. It's so easy to get all these negative comments. And things like that, like they affect us. They affect our self-esteem, right? It could be a, a comment that someone t tells you. It, it, could be, it could be something that seems so, so small, but for some reason you're, vul you're vulnerable at the time and it just knocks you out and it changes everything. It changes your, your, your outlook. Or it could be something big, right? What if you go to the, to, to the doctor and the test result comes back and you are praying that you didn't have the, the disease but the test result is positive? Or you find out that someone you, you love doesn't have much, much time left? Or you're going through some financial trouble? Or your marriage is failing, right? These are all things that, 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 that happen to us and they begin to change our mindset. We go from being this confident, strong person to all, all of a sudden, we're, we're, we're like Elijah who goes into the desert and he asks God to take his life. So why settle your soul? Why is, why, why is that the title of my message? So I was reading a book, right, and it says that we're composed of three, three different things. We have the, the, the body, the soul, and the, and the spirit. The body is like our physical bodies. The soul consists of our emotions our mind and our will, and the spirit reflects on, on how we're made of God's image. It's the part of us that's, that's going to live forever, right? So when you're going through something like Elijah, your soul is not at rest. Your soul is in chaos. I imagine his mind was all over the place. His, his emotions were, were all over the place, right? So what happens when we're feeling like Elijah? What happens when we're going through, 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 through something like, like this? Elijah was fearful, he was burnt out, he was suicidal. Yes, this is a man of God, 
and he had su like there's no way you could deny that that was suicidal thoughts. He was asking God to take his life. Suicidal thoughts are are, are real. There, there's something that people experience. There, there, there's just something that is not may, maybe talked about as much, but it's a huge part of depression. You know, like it's and the, the depression is. And it has been in, in, increasing over the past few years. So these, so these, these are things that were in, in the Bible even before they, they, they happened to us. Elijah was experiencing some sort of, of, of depression and, and anxiety. He felt like he was the only one going through, through the situation that, that he was going through, when in reality, he, he wasn't. If we go back to, 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 to Obadiah, like I said, he saved 100 prophets, right? Which means that Elijah, and at one point he says, I am the only prophet left, but he, but he wasn't. There was a hundred other prophets who knew exactly what, what, what he was going through, right? Who could relate to him. But in that moment, Elijah felt like he was the only one. And there, there, there are times where we're going through stuff and we feel like we're the only ones. There's no way anyone could possibly understand what we're going through. No, no one has ever gone through something like this. But, but, but the truth is that many, that many people have, the thing is that in, in those moments, it's hard to have like a rational thought and to think, you know, there are people who've gone through this. No, because in this moment, your, your mind, your soul is in chaos, so you're not thinking straight, right? The, the, the other thing that, that, that Elisha did is he pushed people away from, from him. In that first passage, it says that he went to Beersheba, he left his servant there, and he went on a, a, a day's journey in the desert. The, the, the people that were closest to, to Elijah, he, he pushed aside. He pushed away. He wanted to, to, to be alone. And in, in, in those moments that we go through, in those moments where our soul is in chaos, we tend to push people away, people who, who can help us, people who have been with us through our hardest times. We, we push them away, and we just want to be alone. The other thing that, that Elijah did is that he abandoned his calling. God had been using Elijah in a powerful way, and when this message came from, from Jezebel, he just left. God didn't tell him to leave. He, he left. He said, this is it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And he abandoned the, the calling that, that God had over his, his life. So what I'm trying to say with all these things is that if you've ever felt any of these, you're not alone, okay? Because this is Elijah. This is a, a powerful man of God, and he felt what many of us have, have felt in the past. He, he felt depressed. He felt anxious. He felt su suicidal. He felt like, 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 like he was alone. These are things that we, that we can feel at, at, at times. And, and just, it just goes to show that it can happen to anybody. If, if, we, if, if we go to Luke and we look at Jesus in the garden, Luke 22, 39 through 44, Jesus went now as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall in, into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. This is Jesus that we're talking about. This is a man who, who was God in the flesh, right? This is a man who lived a perfect life. And even he, during his times of trouble, felt ang anguish. When it says that his drops of blood, his dr sweat was like drops of blood, like just imagine how intense he must have been feeling. So if it, if it can happen to Elijah, if it can happen to Jesus, it can happen to anybody. So you shouldn't feel bad. You shouldn't feel ashamed. You shouldn't feel weird if, if that is what, what's happening to you. Because like, like I'm saying, it can happen to, to anybody. But this is where the hope come, comes in. So if, if we go to that second passage again, 1 first, first Kings 9, 19, 11 through 13, there's a part in there that says, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. So sometimes, you know, like I say, we're, we're, we're going through things. Our mind is in chaos. Our, our souls are in chaos. God could have spoken to Elijah in any other way, but he chose to use a gentle whisper, right? So what, is, so what, 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 is, what does that tell us? It tells us 
even though he abandoned his calling, even though he, he was having all, all these negative thoughts, God chose to approach him in a reassuring way. He chose to ap approach him in a way that made him feel calm, that made him feel settled, right? And that's settle your, your soul. God could have been angry. He could have shown up in the earthquake or in the fire or in the wind, but, but no, he approached him with a gentle whisper. And to, to me, that's, that's, that, that's powerful, right? Be, because it shows that God, like in, in, in his love for us, he approaches us very gent gent gently. He wants us to feel safe in him. He wants us to feel that, that love and that re re reassurance that, that he provides. And this is just a sidebar, not, not really related to what I'm saying, but, but something that, that, I, that I thought about was, it, it wouldn't it be great if that's how we approach each other too, right? I mean, it's so easy to attack pe people on social media again. It's so easy to write, to write a comment, right? Like an, an, a nasty comment. It's, it's so easy because you're not really seeing, seeing the person face to face. It's so easy to, to be mad at somebody and, uh, and, and, and approach them with anger. But if God, he approaches us gently and we're made in the image of God, shouldn't we be doing the same exact thing, right? And I'm not saying, like, it, even if we know that what our brother or our sister is doing is, is wrong, I'm not saying, like, there are times where you might have, have to call them out, but do it in a gentle way, in a, in a loving way, in a way that's not going to make them feel, feel, feel judged. But that's just an, an, an aside. All right. The, the, the other thing that, that I get from, from this passage is that God could speak to you in an unexpected way, right? You would think uh, you're, you're on a mountain and God's saying that he's going to reveal himself and you're seeing all these crazy wonders, right? You're seeing like the fire come down and the wind tear everything apart and you're thinking, all right, like this is God. This has to be God, but it wasn't. It clearly says that God was not in, in the wind, God was not in the fire, God was not in the earthquake, right? So there are times where we're looking for God in these, like, crazy ways, and we're thinking that God's going to speak to us, right? Like, a message is going to descend from heaven or something. Like, you're going to look up, there's going to be a plane flying with a banner that, that, that tells you what, 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 to, what to do. Those, those kind of things, they, God, I'm not saying God can't. I'm not saying, like, you can't open your, your Bible and the first verse you read is like, whoa, that related exactly to what I was going to, right? I'm not saying that that can't happen, but I'm just saying that God doesn't always use those ways. Some, sometimes God uses a very gen, gen, gentle way. And the important thing, if Elijah wasn't paying attention, he would have missed it, right? If, 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 if it's a whisper, and I'm not the biggest fan of, of whispering because some people don't know how to whisper. And they whisper louder than, than, than they talk, right? Hey, what's going on? Right? I, I, I don't like it. But if it's a gentle whisper, right? Like, like, like think about you waking up someone that you love, right? Like, you, you, you don't want to do it in a rough way. You do it in a very gentle way. Um, so if Elijah was not paying attention, he would have missed it. And there are times when our mind is in such chaos, there's so much going on that we forget to quiet down and pay attention to the ways that God can be speaking to, to us. Now, if, we, if we, we look at the rest of that chapter, this is pretty much all it takes for Elijah to keep going on, on with his ministry. It's not some, something, you know, more that happens. God, God, God shows up. He, he whispers to him. He asks him what, what he's doing there. Elijah tells him how he's feeling. And then God t tells him, all right, let's, let's, let's keep going. And, and, and Elijah keeps, keeps going in, in his ministry. So what, so what does it really mean to settle our soul, right? Like, why is that the title of my message? Because I believe that when our souls are at rest, our souls are settled, we can have, like in Philippians 4, 6, the peace of God that surpasses all, all, all understanding. Now, we're going to be going through, through things in life. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that you'll never feel depressed or anxious or scared again. But what, what this means is that we can have those times, but we have this deep-rooted peace knowing that God is with us and he will carry us through, right? It isn't easy all, 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 all the time, right? 
and 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 it's, it's not like it's it's not it's not realistic to be up here and say like oh guys it, it's easy just just trusting in God. But the thing is that when you're practicing these things, when you're relying on God all the time, when the time when the tough times do come, it's it's a lot easier to just keep doing what what you're doing. Because no no matter what 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 comes your way, hey you know I I, I feel anxious like this situation is, is not good but I'm but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing I'm gonna keep trusting it in God like have you guys ever seen someone who's going through a, a situation that you can't even imagine what it must be like and they're like and they're happy and they're they're, they're optimistic and they're and their confidence is in God like that's inspiring to me it, it's inspiring to see someone going through something and for them to just have like so much faith and God, and what I'm saying is that that can be each and every one of us. So, I always like like to come with some practical things, right? So, what are some some ways to settle our, our our soul? The first one is to go back to the source. Number one, God told Elijah to go to Mount Horeb, right? It's, it's called the, the, the mountain of God. When you do more research, you find out that Mount Horeb was actually Mount Zion. And what, and what happened in Mount Zion, that's where Moses went up to meet with God. That's where they came up with the, that's what God showed. He gave them the, the, the Ten Commandments and all, all, all the laws and everything, right? So when the, the people of Israel came out of Egypt, that was where, where they went. That was the original source of uh, God's law and everything, right? So it's not a coincidence that God tells Elijah to, to, to go to the same mountain. And some, some, sometimes we have to go back to the source. And it could be different things for different pe people, right? Some of us, when we first came to God, we, we were on fire. We were praying all the time. We were worshiping. like We were on fire. And then like as the years kind of went on, that kind of faded down, right? And we started to do things on our own, and we decided to, to make our own decisions. And maybe things aren't going the way that you expected them to, or think the way they, that, that you want them to, and it's because you've gotten away from the source, right? Some of us um, have not known God yet. Some of us don't, don't know who, who God is. We've never given our life to, to the Lord. So in this case, going to the source is finally accepting Jesus as your savior and connecting with God, right? The Lord says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 29, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This is an invitation that Jesus says in the Bible. He says to, to come to him, all who are weary and burdened, it says that he will give you rest for your souls, right? So how do we settle our souls? We put our burden on him. We go back to the source. Amen. That's, that's, that's number one. Number two, put your trust in God. The, the, the thing about Elijah was that even though he was feeling the way that he was feeling, even though he was burnt, burnt out and depressed and everything like that, when God gave him his instructions, he still followed the, the, the instructions. So he, he still had trust in God even during, during those, those, those moments. And if we go back to, to what I read about G Jesus when he was praying in the garden, even though he, he was feeling ang ang anguish and all these things, he, he still said, not my will, yours be done. So even though he was feeling all these things, he still had trust in and the Lord, that the Lord knew more than him, that the Lord's plans were, were, were greater than what he wanted, right? So when, when we're going through, through these times, we have to put our trust in, in, in God. Psalm 62, 5, 7 says, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. Another version starts it, the New International says, yes, my soul, find rest in God. He, he, he alone is, is my rock. The, the, third, the third way that we, that we can settle our souls is to know what God has spoken over, over us. Now, this, this can be an individual thing. Maybe God has spoken to, to you individually. Maybe God has given you a word, right, that you carry throughout your life. 
Or it could just be in the Bible. It could be like a general thing that God says. And if we listed out everything that God speaks over us in the Bible, it would be, I would be here for, for hours. So there, there's a few that, that I wanted to, to point out. One is John 6, 16, 33. I have told you these things so that you, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the, the world. Jesus is telling the disciples this when he's talking about that he's going to be leaving, he's going to be sending the, 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 the Holy Spirit. The thing about this is that Jesus, he, he acknowledges in this life you will have tr trouble, right? So it's not a, a, a surprise when trouble comes our way. It's not like because now we're living in God, like everything is going to be good and, and, and perfect because that's, that's it's not the case. We're living a life where we're going to have trouble, where we're going to have times where we're going through through, through, through hard things. But in the end, he says, I, but take heart. I have overcome the, the world. So that means that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're battling, God has already over, overcome it. And it's important to, to, to have that on, on, in your heart. The other thing that God says is uh, John 8, 836. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free in, in, indeed. So... Some of us might be going through a, a, a battle. Maybe, maybe you've, you've been struggling with something for years, right? This isn't like, like something that happened to Elijah that it just ha happened out of nowhere. Maybe some of us have been struggling with things for years. It could be an, an addiction. It, it could be ju just an issue that does not want to go away. And there are times where we feel like we're failing God over and over again, right? But here it says that if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. So that means that even if it doesn't feel that way, even if it feels like this battle is never going to end, always keep in the back of your mind, God has said that you are free. So no matter what the world tries to tell you, no matter what thoughts you have, God tells you that you are, are for free. And again, the, the, the list could be endless. The fourth, the fourth way to settle your soul is to seek out positive support. Now, Obadiah was a man of faith, like I said, he had saved a hundred of, of the Lord's prophets. And Elijah had spoken to him before everything happened. So Elijah could have easily, when he, he got the message from Jezebel, he could have e easily went, went, went to Obadiah and said, hey, I need some help. He could have hidden him, right? Like, like he had been doing over the past three, three years. But he chose not, not, not to. There's sometimes that we forget that there's people in our, in our lives that want to help us. There's people a, a, around us that are willing to be there for us, to help us, but we choose not, 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 not to use them. And the, the, the important thing, when, when I say positive support, right, I'm, I'm not saying like, uh, I'm, I'm not doing the weird thing where I'm saying like, only have church friends, because that's not re re realistic. I, I don't only have church friends. But what I'm saying is that when you're going through times like this, it's important to seek out people with the same mindset as you, right? You can reach out to anybody, and they, they can give you advice, but that doesn't mean that that's, that's the advice that you want to follow, right? So when you have people that are of the same mind, that are of the same spirit, then you can reach out to them during, during these times, and they can pray with you. They, they can en encourage you so that your, your soul may be settled. The last, the last thing that I'm going to say about sell, selling your soul, uh, it could be a controversial one, uh, get professional help, Right? Um, if you've been looking for a sign to go to counseling, this is it, okay? Um, me mental health has such a stigma in the church, and it's something that wasn't addressed for years, and it, it's being talked about more now, which is awesome. But, but, but the, the truth is that there are times where we, we might need to go to, count, to counseling, right? There are the times where things are, are, are all over the place, and it's hard for us to really start working if our mind is racing and we're having all, all, all these thoughts. There's nothing wrong with seeking help. There's nothing weak about it. There's nothing wrong at, at all with, 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 with getting help. So if you've been on, on the line about this, I would encourage you to, to, to get some help. The musicians could come up. So Elijah. A great prophet of God, a man who did miracles, a man who worked wonders, a man who was walking with faith, who was walking with power, and, and God gets a message that changes him completely. 
His soul goes from resting in the Lord to being in chaos. Elijah was in a dark place. And maybe this, this morning, some of you, some of us are in a dark place. We're, we're, not, we're not in the place where we want to be. Our, our soul, our minds are just in, in chaos and they're not at rest. We know some, some of the things that, that, that happened to Elijah when, 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 he was, when he was experiencing that. God called Elijah back to the source and settled his soul with a gentle whisper. What is keeping your soul, what is keeping your, your mind from being at rest? What situations are you going through this, this morning that is not letting you sleep at night or is not letting you have the full con, con, confidence in God? Just, just like Elijah, God wants all of us to be at a point where our souls are at rest. Our souls are settled in, in, in him. And I, and I listed out a bunch of ways that, that that could happen, but I think it all starts now when we make a, a choice, when we decide that we'll no longer be in chaos, we'll settle and we'll rest in, in, in God. This, this song that, that the worship team is, is going to sing, is, it says, it is well with my soul. And that's my prayer for, for, for everyone here today is that no, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are in life, that you'll put your trust in Jesus. And in spite of everything, you'll say that it is well with your soul. Thank you.
It is well. 